What exactly is a keyword? How should you be using them in your marketing to get your content seen by more people? And should you be using chat GPT for keyword research? In this episode, I am talking to Harry Sanders from Studio Hawk, who is going to break it down in a practical, simple way for all you busy business owners. Welcome to Sales Without Socials. If you too are mentally exhausted from the constantly changing algorithms, you're not going to return on the blood, sweat and tears you put into your social media efforts and know there must be a better way to market your business, then you are in the right place. I'm your host, Tanya Williams. I love pink, wearing four inch heels and being the sparkly chief of everything at Digital Conversation. In the last six months, I have transformed my business growth by doubling down on the marketing strategies that actually work, and that doesn't include Facebook ads, Reels, or silly TikToks. So if you're like me, and you're sick of being on the social media hamster wheel and want to focus your time on marketing strategies that don't suck your time without a result, then make sure you subscribe and keep listening. Are you with me? Let's dive in. And oh, you know what? Let's have a little bit of fun along the way. Hey, it's Tanya here, Chief of Everything at Digital Conversations, back with another episode of the Sales Without Socials podcast. And we're going to be talking all about keywords today. And I have another fantastic guest, Harry Sanders from Studio Hawk, is going to help us unpack all the stuff we need to know about keywords because it's definitely not one of those sexy marketing topics, but it's certainly one of those very important marketing topics that we all need to know about. And don't worry, we're going to dumb it down. So we're going to keep it nice and simple because I know some people get very confused with this stuff, including myself at times as well. Hey, Harry, how are you? Good. Thanks, Tanya. Thank you for being uh, part of the Sales Without Socials podcast. It's great to have you on. Of course. Always happy to jump on. Would you like to start with introducing yourself um, and a bit of, tell people a bit about your background and give a bit of context about who you are and what you're about. Sure. So I, I founded a company called Studio Hook about eight years ago when I was uh, 17. And oh, wow. um, the idea behind that was to create a specialized SEO company. There are a lot of companies dabbling in it, but I wanted to create a company that I called Especially Specialist. Mm -hmm. And so I created that and we had a unique model that we didn't have account managers um we had engineers working directly with clients and so over those eight years we've grown to about 60 seo specialists globally now uh and we're definitely the largest in australia and, and recently we won the global search awards for best large seo agency globally so that was uh Fantastic. exciting so this is definitely my wheel park wow 60 people that's a lot of staff how do you find that <laughs> <laughs> uh challenging but i've got a great leadership team uh, oh, and I'm always learning. Good. I'm always very vocal with people when I'm I'm talking about in business groups and stuff like that. And you start, they said, you have an agency. I said, no, I'm just a consultant. And they said, how many staff do you have? I said, none. And I don't want <laughs> any. So <laughs> I hear yeah. all these stories from people. I'm just like, no, thank you. You can keep that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of work. It is, I'm sure. Okay. So uh, staff aside, let's uh, talk about keywords. Now, as I mentioned, I really sort of want to dumb this down because it's, when you talk about SEO, there's so many mm. misunderstandings about what it actually is. There's so many misunderstandings about what keywords actually are, how they're used, how they help us, all that sort of stuff. So I want to get really basic for all the non-marketing people and the non-SEO people because I don't class myself as an SEO person at all. Um, it's mm. not my, not in my wheelhouse. Um, and to be honest, I, it's not something that I really enjoy either. And that's why I <laughs> handed off to specialists like yourself to do it. Um but let's start with explaining what is a keyword. All right. Really fundamentally, and I'm going to keep everything. I love analogies, by the way. Okay, so I'm going to keep it. everything very simple. A keyword is something that someone puts into the Google search or even ChatGPT nowadays uh, to find information. Very fundamentally. That's what a keyword is. Okay. That sounds simple enough, right? <laughs> <laughs> sounds simple. Okay. So why should we give a crap about having keywords in our marketing? Very good question. Um, a lot, about 76% of traffic 
is coming from organic search, mm -hmm. not paid advertising or anything like that. A lot of people will find you through organic search. Yep. So the only way to optimize for organic search is to understand what we call buyer intent or, mm -hmm. you know, different kinds of keywords that people might use to find you. And so that's why we look at keywords and then why they're so important. Okay. Now I remember quite a few years ago when I was sort of starting out in this stuff and we were talking about keywords and it was all about picking one word or, you know, it was like mm. shoes or women's shoes <laughs> and stuff like that. These days it's changed a fair bit, hasn't it? Because there's all these yeah. long tail keywords and all the rest of it. Can you explain the different types of keywords that there are? Absolutely. So, um, yeah, you mentioned this word long tail keywords. So long tail keywords, they uh, basically mean many like words put together. So mm -hmm. shoes is an example of a keyword My or buy topic, shoes. By the way, so <laughs> <laughs> well, let's stay Same on that example. topic. <laughs> <laughs> or buy shoes. Buy shoes is two words, but still a keyword. Yeah. Now both of those are very competitive, and if you're a small brand, you have virtually zero chance of competing in them, mm -hmm. uh, unless you're like one of our clients is New Balance, and they compete in that space. But even New Balance are very clever about the keywords they use. Mm -hmm. So New Balance want to want to go after terms such as best tennis shoes for long days on a court, mm -hmm. right? Now, that's a long tail keyword. There's a very specific search yeah. intent behind it. Um, so we're producing content that caters towards people looking for that, looking at the different tennis shoes that New Balance might offer, why they're so good for extended court sessions on tennis, uh, and that's how we cater towards that particular keyword. Okay, so you're starting with the keyword of going, well, what's the intent? What are people are starting? What, what are they searching for? What are they putting into Google? Mm. And then you're taking that and then you're creating content that talks to that. Exactly right. Okay. So a lot of people think of keywords like you got to put your keywords on the page with a 3% density or you need to, yeah. I don't know, all your website needs to read really stupidly. Forget about all of that stuff. I don't want yep. you worried about that at all. I want you to think about if I was a buyer looking for tennis shoes and I was looking at different providers, why would I pick New Balance when I'm searching for shoes that I can use for a long long session on the court? That's the content that you should be thinking about creating to serve those users. Hmm. Interesting. So I think that's, I mean, and that's why a lot of um, specialists talk about when you're doing keyword research, that obviously mm. those keywords need to be in that content. From a website perspective, how does that work? So if we've, already, if we've already got an existing website, for example, and we're selling those shoes, years back it was all about keyword stuffing and putting the keyword in mm. multiple times and all the rest of it. I know there's been a lot of changes since then. How do we incorporate keywords into existing content that we already have or something like a website that we already have? Yeah, that's a great question. So what what we like to do, think of yourself as an architect. Again, here we go, the analogies. Mm -hmm. um, think of yourself as an architect. You probably offer different services and different things that you as a business do, whether you mm -hmm. sell things online, different categories, whether you offer services, different services. Now, step back and look at the website. You've got a home, you've got an about, you've got a blog, you've probably got a services page or, or a shop page if you're in e-commerce. Mm -hmm. What are the different categories that you have within that? So each kind of category of products should have its own category page with a blurb of what's going on there. And that's your opportunity to put keywords or descriptive factors. Or if you have a services page, you should break out each of those different services you offer. One really low hanging fruit I see is a lot of businesses have just one services page for everything they do. Yeah, That is super confusing to Google and to users because if oh, I land on that site and click on it, I see all these different services, not the actual one I want to learn about. Okay. So would you recommend, like, typically you'll have a menu, right? And in your menu, you'll mm. have services. You click on services and then, as you said, it, they'll all that stuff will pop up. So you're saying in your menu, you can have services, but then there should be individual pages that come off that. Yeah. And every service should have a different page that talks to that because that's going to help from an SEO perspective. Absolutely. And if you want to, oh. there's an example, like our, our website's a good example of that, Studio mm -hmm. Hawk. So if you go to the website there, you'll see all the services truncated down into sections. Yeah. Pretty much replicate that for your business. And that's how we rank so high for SEO terms. Right. Okay. So we've got a menu, we've got individual pages. So on those pages, do we need to have different keywords? So the keywords obviously should be relevant mm. to the content on the page, right? Because it needs to, it's got to have relevance, right? 
For sure. Yeah. So this is where we kind of get into that keyword research territory. Yeah. And keyword research, it's not anything, it's not new, but there's a lot of cool technology behind it. Yeah. Now, one thing that a lot of people are doing is they're using AI for their keyword research. I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, and the reason yeah. why I wouldn't recommend that is AI doesn't actually have data. Remember, AI is very good at bullshitting. Right. It will you can plug in give me yep. keywords for this and it might give you a lot of keywords, but the volume it gives you is completely wrong. And if you use any tool to check it, you'll see that. So right. you can so maybe we get can inspiration. G B T and going, I want keywords for this particular term because that's like gonna send us off on the totally wrong direction. Totally. So what you yeah. wanna see is like what are your competitors doing? And you can use yep. a tool like SEMrush. Yep. Um and um, if you, you you can organize a, a seven day trial of that tool as well. Yeah. Um, I've got a code on that. I'll, I'll send that to you, Tanya, so that you can yeah we can share that give your listeners it. that. So, yeah. Um, and effectively you can look at your keywords, have a look at what key uh, so your competitors see what keywords they're ranking for, and then going okay these are the keywords that are driving my competitors' traffic. How can I incorporate these onto my page and then the best way of doing that is looking at what your competitors pages look like and then go I'm going to create a better version of this I'm going to answer more questions or I'm going to provide more targeted information or I'm going to show them why my service or product is better than what my competitors are offering mm -hmm. so coming back to obviously the content that's on the page now I know um, you know these days, I mean, I'm a very visual person, so I hate to read a lot of content. I want something that's really easy to mm. flick my eyes over, lo lots of visuals and stuff like that. How do you balance that on from a search perspective so you, it still looks nice and it's easy to consume, but it's not just a page full of words that are great keywords that people might be searching for? Yeah, I, I think it is an interesting balance and something that we mm. – discuss a lot like how do you have a category page with a bit of content but also your products yeah. so i tend to i tend to suggest people look at guys like office works or um you know maybe new balance has got some good category pages jeans west these are brands that uh, i know um have got really good category pages and they've mm -hmm. done it in a way that doesn't ruin the user experience yeah, um, so have a look at those guys yeah. and draw inspiration from, cause these guys have invested millions of dollars in testing consumer experience. Mm. You can, as a, as a business, you can latch onto that and go, okay, great. I can just plug that their learnings into my business. Absolutely. And I think you just, that, you know, the word that you use there about customer experience is so, so important because we know that if people that have a good experience on your website, then it's easy for them just to bounce straight off. So exactly. Yeah. It's having that balance. Okay. So. Um, how do we work out what keywords to use on our website? Now, you mentioned going and having a look at your competitor mm. sites and we can go and use a, a tool by SEMrush. Is um, just going to Google and starting to type in words to see what, come, what populates a good way to look for keywords? Like what other things are, are simple things if people don't want to pay for tools and stuff like that? Yeah, this is the tricky nature of it. There are some free tools like people mm. also ask. Yeah. Um, but plugging keywords into Google is one of the most common pitfalls I see business owners making. Yeah. Um, because to be honest, you don't know what your customers are searching and you have no idea what the volumes for these keywords are. Yeah. Um, so you're completely making subjective decisions without any data backing. Um, that being said, you can look at the people also ask, but I would highly recommend getting a tool or finding a tool that gives you some kind of search volume. So you yeah. can see the volume of these keywords. A lot of people, you know, if I had a dollar every time a business owner came to me and they said, I already rank super high for this term. I don't need to do anything else. And it's a term that they've kind of coined that has zero people searching it a month and they're at the top of the <laughs> list. It's like, that is great. But how many sales do you get through that term? Oh, yeah. uh, none. It's like, well, what's the point? <laughs> yeah, it's working super well. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not... SEO isn't necessarily about being on the top of the list. It's about getting sales. And well, that's exactly right. And it's being on that shopping list to start with, isn't it? Not on mm. page 10, which well, people aren't even going to page two. For then, sure. Really. Um, so, okay. So we figured out what keywords we want to use. How do we go? Um, so in terms of, I mentioned before about blogs and content. Mm. Obviously we're looking at, you, you mentioned also looking at competitors keywords as well. Should we be going back then and going, okay, we've already got an existing website. We've done some research. Let's go and rewrite 
content that's on our existing web website. So we might going to be going to rewrite some old blogs or our pages. Is that a good idea to do that? And then the second part of that is how long does that take for Google to actually recognize that those changes are there? <laughs> yes. Um, I'll cover up the first part. I would say in most instances, that's, that's a great idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, unless you are completely crushing it with your current page and just driving more sales than you can handle, revisiting that's always good. And the yeah. framework we use to revisit that is what we call EAT. Um, it stands for, it's got two E's, it's a little deceptive. The first one is uh, experience. Yep. So what's the experience like on this page? Uh, the second is your expertise. Have yep. you shown your expertise on this page? Your authority? Um, you know, what awards, what recognition have you got? It's the same thing we do in our bios. Like when I introduced yeah. myself, I mentioned I've got this company, we do just SEO. And then your trust, which is, you know, reviews that you have. Yeah. If you've got those four kind of principles on that new page and in that new content you've rewritten, you're well, well and truly off to the races. Uh, the second part, how long does it take Google to index it? That's a tricky question because it depends on the size of your website. No one knows how the old Google works half the time because they keep changing the rules, right? So the more popular your website is, the more often it gets indexed. So if you have a website like The Age, that's getting indexed every hour, probably every 15 minutes, it's getting recrawled for new content. If you have a, you know, smaller business or, you know, maybe we're talking less than a thousand organic sessions a month. Yeah. Uh, you probably get crawled maybe once a month, sometimes every couple of weeks mm-hmm. um, for Google to reconsider that content. Or if you're really small and you've got no traffic already, it might be possible that it's not even currently in the index. Right. So then you could be waiting around um, for the, uh, yeah, for a <laughs> long time. You might be old and grey by the time it happens. Yeah, correct. <laughs> Which is why um, obviously getting found and getting traffic to your website is such an important part of the whole equation, right? Of course. Yeah. I do a lot of work with um, family office and investors now. And, you know, back two years ago, it was all about your paid traffic. Now everyone's figured out, well, I can just pay for that paid traffic and all of a sudden they don't have a business. Yeah. So now it's all about organic brand and ownership. Um, So if you don't have organic people finding you through SEO and brand, well, you don't really have a business. You just have a fancy advertising channel. Right. So all these people that are spending big bucks on on, on advertising to send traffic mm. aren't necessarily doing the right thing to, well, well you know, to generate, well, what, for, sorry, they might be doing the right thing and it might help with some sales, but it's not going to help yeah. from, a, from a search perspective organically. Sure, absolutely. Like there is nothing wrong with driving paid sales. In fact, yeah. I encourage it. It's a yeah. great channel. Yeah. Um, however, if you're putting all your eggs in that basket of marketing, you will note over the past year, those paid ads have gotten more expensive. Yep. And I can't mm-hmm. mention the name, but we worked with pretty a very major retailer, ASX 100, that was entirely reliant on a paid strategy and lost a large, large share of market because a competitor was able to take that organically from them. And all of a sudden, they were losing money on every sale that they were making through paid, cha- through paid channels. So... You want to be really careful that you're building, you know, a smart business, leveraging multiple channels rather than dumping money into paid. Absolutely. And I've always been um, a supporter of people going, use multiple channels. Don't put all your eggs in the one basket. Mm. We see the same with social media. People put all this time and money on Facebook and Insta and you go, but what about everything else? Oh, we don't need that. And it's like, well, yes, you do. You can't put everything in yeah. one area. You've got to have that. It's like having a share portfolio, right? You've got to have diversity. Exactly. You know, it's the same thing with your marketing. People, you know, putting 80% of your time and money into one thing is never, um, you know, a safe strategy over a longer term for businesses. Totally. Exactly right. Even in Google, like as much as I work in that sphere, like if you're, if something happens and uh, maybe an algorithm update happens and I don't want to, I hate using that example because I'll quickly preface that (laughs) a lot of people will say algorithm updates happen all the time and that's true, but the fundamentals of SEO hasn't changed in many, many years. So don't get fooled into SEO people saying, oh, the algorithm, the algorithm, this, it's mostly lies. But let's say you get caught up in, in something or Maybe your industry has been affected by some new legislation. Um, you know, that can really rock up your SEO. So you want to have mm. other channels that you can diversify with. Absolutely. So 
in regards to keywords, is it okay to use the same keywords on multiple pages? So you think, oh, this is a really good keyword that people are searching for. Should I put that on multiple pages or should you be very mindful of going, well, I'm only going to put it on, you know, use a particular keyword or, or search term in one page rather than having it scattered all through your website or your content? No, it's fine. As long as it reads naturally. Yeah. Um, if you're putting keywords on and someone can look at them and and tell you what your keywords are just by reading the content or worse, it almost looks jarring the way they're used, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. I always say, you know, feel free to use whatever you want. And then if you talk about a concept a lot, you can use what's called an internal link. So you can then link to the category, the product or whatever that you're actually trying to push from that content section that is amazing that's best practice you can start building up that structure again of the website by linking to where you want crawlers to to index okay so in in regards to internal links then mm. is there a um a best practice or a limit on how many you should have on different pages does it matter if you've got links going to i've got you know say i've got a services page with one thing on it and it's actually linking to three other internal pages is that a good thing or should i limit how many internal links i have that's probably okay three four is probably okay yeah um but if you start having pages with like 50 60 and every second thing is a link messy yeah. An internal link should make sense. Think of it like a doorway. Think of it like, okay, someone lands on your homepage. They go to your pricing page. They go to your pricing page. They're looking through. And on the pricing page, you talk about some specific service that you do that's different. They click on that. That takes them to a blog about that specific service that you do that's different. Yeah. So now it has that's to just make logical journey. sense to go, well, that exactly. makes sense for that to go there, that, for that to go there. Totally. That That's a journey that makes sense. And now Google sees that that blog post for people searching for that specific issue, hey, they should rank that higher because important pages and important user journeys are flowing onto that. So that's really what it's about. Yeah. Okay. Um, we talked about um, Google before. Um, how does Google look at keywords in general? Like has that changed much over the years now we've talked about algorithm changes and mm. stuff like that that happen and you hear a, a, exactly what you said there's all this scaremongering oh my god there's a new algorithm out and it's called this and this is what it's going to do mm. and you know and and people go oh my god what does that mean and freak out what how much has it actually changed over over the years to the point that it does have a big impact more so probably for smaller businesses but any larger businesses i suppose that are listening as well but like should we be freaking out when we hear that there's an algorithm change on Google and it's going to impact our keywords and all that sort of stuff? <laughs> For 99% of you, absolutely not. The only time you should be freaking out about algorithm updates is uh, if you've been doing something dodgy. Um, okay. <laughs> that is really the only time. So gambling uh, websites, yep. notoriously, every time there's an algorithm update, they get hit. Pornographic websites notoriously get hit by those algorithm updates, but 99% of businesses doing the right thing or trying to do the right thing will not, unless they've got some company, some SEO company doing dodgy stuff on their behalf. Yeah. The only time it really is something that you need to look at, you know, it might be a new update around Google Perspectives, which is a new feature they're rolling out, and it's just mm -hmm. about sharing short clips. Now, that's an update, but that's an opportunity. That's not going to absolutely catastrophically ruin your business or push you down to the bottom. It's a new opportunity of where you can capture more search. Cool. Um, okay. I'm just, just, I'm taking all this in. There's just so much to consider. <laughs> um, so most of the, a lot of the people that are listening to this podcast are busy business owners and boutique size business owners. What are the top three tips that you could give to them when it comes to the search stuff. So a lot of them don't know much about marketing. Mm. They certainly don't know much about SEO or keywords. They're super busy that, you know, worrying about this stuff is probably the last thing on their mind. Yeah. What's a simple way for them to get started? Um, so, cause often it can get overwhelming as well. Cause you go, Oh my God, there's so much. Where do I start? Mm. What are some tips that you can give them to go, okay, this is where you need to start. And this is the, these should probably be the priorities that you need to look at. Yeah, I think some of the things we laid out earlier just around thinking about the structure mm -hmm. and the content of your site. Yeah. Um, I think if you're an e-commerce business, um, 
probably has its own different might. rules, right? Because it's yeah, different. it really. If you're an e-commerce business specifically, I hate to break it to you, but understanding your paid, your SEO, and your socials is as important as understanding your distribution, your P&L. Yeah. If you don't understand your SEO, your socials, that kind of stuff, like the back of your hand, you are just gonna get taken for a ride constantly. Mm-hmm. So I would recommend learning as much as you can. We've got a um, free academy called Hawk Academy, uh, which you can plug into Google and there's, it, it's got a really nice guided journey. So there's about 24 hours worth of content. However, dude, as if you know, if you really want to go through that, if you're not trying to get into SEO as a career, <laughs> you can distill that down to a journey and yeah. it gives you only specific model, modules to your business. And you only need to go through the practical things specifically to your CMS like Shopify or WordPress and you can click that. So it's super easy. But for most people, I would encourage you to get an understanding of that. And you can do that in like, I think you can do the course in like four or five hours, you know, sit down on a Saturday, get a glass of red by the TV. I don't know, whatever floats your boat and just learn. And that way you can question people and you have an understanding about something because there's nothing worse than, you know, you thinking, you know, a lot about something and then getting caught out. Yeah. I think that's really good advice. I think it's really important for anyone that's engaging a supplier to do anything to have some sort of a understanding of how it works and so forth, because there's a lot of charlatans out there and there's a lot of people that are going, mm. oh, I'm going to get you on the page one of Google in the next five minutes and all this sort of rubbish yeah. that you see. So I think it makes sense that um, that you, you sit down and you take a little bit of time just to understand, even if it's just some basics and some of those basic words and a bit of an understanding of how it works. So then you, you can talk to suppliers and and talk to people who are doing this and have an understanding of what to expect and how much it's going to cost and all that sort of stuff totally and you can you can pull them up on things like i always say you know everyone says there's a lot of people in seo there's a lot of seo hustlers but very few masters um you know there's a reason why there's a talent shortage so severe in this industry it's because while a lot of people will say they can do seo there's very few people that actually know how to do SEO properly. Um, So if you could make yourself someone that understands the fundamentals, you'll easily be able to sift through the people that come to you and go hustler, 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 master, and then hire someone good to do that for you. Okay. So we've got understand the structure and the content, do some training, so learn and understand. What's another one? Mm. Third one, um, third tip for uh, beginners, I would say... I mean, we've got the learning cover down. The third tip I would say is just apply it. Like, you know, don't get Do too <laughs> theoretical theoretical in your head about these things. Yeah. Um, you know, you can go down rabbit holes of crawl budget density and all, all these different things. But at the end of the day, it's like, just do some things on your website that you think make a better user experience and encourage search engines to find you. Um, yeah, I know a lot of smart people that get stuck on the doing part of it. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> that happens constantly. I, like I always say to people, it's great to go and learn and do a course and stuff, and unless you mm. actually do the work, it's not going to make any difference whatsoever. So the yeah. learning is the easy part; it's the doing that's the hard part, <laughs> and that's exactly. where everyone falls over because that's not a lot of the time it's not fun. So you just go, "Oh, I won't do it." <laughs> exactly. That's why we try to make you know in the course we've got all these practical elements, so you're yeah. forced to kind of do it as you're listening along. Um, yeah, so yeah. you make sure you go and do it. And I think as, as you mentioned before, like, you know, obviously learn this, but maybe just even step by step. So start with your home page, maybe, mm. and then maybe go to your about page or your services page and yeah. just do one page at a time rather than looking at it all and going, Oh my God, where do I start? Like just start with a step and do totally. something. And then, yeah. Yeah. Where, yeah. What are your most important pages? Where are you going to start? All that kind of stuff. How are you going to, you know, another quick one another quick fourth one that i'm thinking of is a lot of business owners are doing like ai stuff they're like using ai to generate all their blogs awesome totally cool great idea but make sure you put a human element in that otherwise it's just garbage yeah i think uh, and there's been a lot i mean everyone's talking about chat and all and ai and everything Mm. at the moment and so much of the stuff that's coming out is do is exactly that it's a good starting point it's good for research it's good to get you started, get you thinking, but you have to personalize and add the human touch to it because otherwise yeah. it sounds ridiculous. Put your expertise into it. There's a reason yeah. why you have this business. There's a reason why you're an expert on what you do. 
put your expertise in it. Otherwise, everyone gets the same output from ChatGPT or whatever AI tool. Yeah. So make sure you put your unique perspective and experience in the content. Awesome. Well, there's a lot to unpack there, but I like the fact that it's all really practical. You've shared some practical tools and some practical tips um, that, you know, busy business owners can can go and use. So we will share the links to the Academy if we can and SEMrush um, yep. and anything else that we think is re- on obviously the Studio Hawk website so people can go and check check you out and, and see how you guys have done it as well because <laughs> you know, it's like, how have they done it? Let's, let's you know, copy what they're doing. Feel um, free. Feel yeah, free. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anything else that you want to mention before we say hooray to everybody? No, just um, SEO is in a very exciting uh, part of its life cycle right now. Uh, it is becoming really measurable, really exciting, really tied to brand. See, it's almost going through SEO a golden age. In one sentence because <laughs> <laughs> we'll get excited about it because it's get it's getting big. It's getting yeah. really exciting. So it doesn't have to be the boring data analytical stuff that everyone thinks about. It can be very mm-hmm. creative and fun now. So don't be afraid to lean into it. But remember, at the end of the day, you are the business owner. Yeah, good. Great advice. Thank you, Harry. Thank you for Thank helping you. make some sense of all this, these keywords and stuff that we often get a bit overwhelmed and a bit like, oh, my God, I'm, it's all too hard. I'm just not going to do anything. Um, <laughs> pleasure talking to an expert that knows his stuff and has been doing it for so long and is helping so many businesses get this stuff right. So really appreciate your time and uh, hopefully we can check in again soon. Sounds good. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Harry. Cheers. If you are curious about how your business can make sales without focusing on social media, then I invite you to check out the Sales Without Socials program. The Sales Without Socials program helps B2B service-based business owners master a reliable, consistent, and repeatable way to generate leads and sales in 15 minutes a day without posting on socials five days a week so you can stop chasing algorithms and start effortlessly landing dream clients on repeat. If you are mentally exhausted by the constant changes, sick of trying to beat the unbeatable algorithms, and know there must be a better way to market your business that takes much less time, but gets you better results, then I promise you'll love this program. You'll find it at saleswithoutsocials.com.au. And if you enjoyed this episode, I'd really love it if you could subscribe and leave a review, because more subscribers and reviews help the podcast reach more people and I would be truly grateful. Thank you for being awesome. And until next time, you tune in. Never let anyone go your marketing spark.